welcome back my friend to a new tutorial here using affinity designer i'm joe silva and let's get started to a new lesson i want to show you in this tutorial the three methods in order to apply the merge of objects and how you can do that <laughs> First of all, what we need to do is to insert shapes because only by doing that that we're gonna understand 100% how you can do. Well, first of all, we insert here three ellipses. I'm gonna make this in green. Duplicate one big, duplicate and one medium size, something like this. After that, I'm going to create a rectangle here below just to represent a tree silhouette. So basically, I'm gonna show you how that will work from here. I will change here, that case, this color to something a little bit different, just show you how that works, something like that for now. Guys, the very first method that you need to learn about merging objects or subtracting, the standard one, it is by selecting, all right, just like this. As you can see, I have here three layers selected, which represent this one, one, two, and three. In that case, you have here these options, which is add, that's gonna merge them together, and they will become just one single layer. And this single layer is a path, which means that you can change just like that. If I get back to this result here, we have other options, all right, here on top, which is going to, let's say, subtract, intersect. But what's important for this tutorial is to show you the methods to merge the object. So you know that now that the first one is the merge from here, it's gonna create this result. The second one, it is the, the compound, which is this option right here, this compound option. If you enable this option, Affinity will do this. Here on the layers, you have these objects, as you can see, okay? And these objects are not destructible, which means that you can apply here, let's say, multiple circles, just like that, and build many different kind of shapes from this uh, situation here. So basically, as you add here new shapes, this will be a part of one single object, which is this compound here. So if you apply gradients just like that, you can apply more and more shapes and this gradient will still be on there, okay? This is very nice in order to create fast shape beauty. But also by selecting here the shape that we have, let's say you want to make this more flat, here this area more flat, okay? I will insert here a rectangle right here first. This rectangle is being applied here inside of this compound. This rectangle, I'm gonna click here in the very side and click subtract. And what Affinity will do, it is to subtract this area. And then you can create a kind of cloud shape if you want. Oh, you can create many different results by doing that. Let's say ah, I have here this guy here and I'll duplicate this compound, make it as white. And then you can have a really fast result by doing that. Look at this. I have here this cloud, okay, this one, I'll duplicate and then I'm going to erase this, erase this, change the size and duplicate and there you go. We have different clouds here as you see and this is happening because we are doing with the compound and if you want to convert this as a normal curve as we usually do, you can click here in the compound and click here on top to convert to curves. Pay attention, as you see, we have a lot of layers that represent all this compound over here and then click here on the convert to curves. And then this will become now a curve as we are use, get used, you know, to do in vector, as you can see. Uh, pay attention because if you try to export this compound here to Adobe Illustrator in SVG, perhaps uh, the SVG will not be able to read this file. Why? Because you know uh, this is not something that the SVG files will understand. Well, I hope that this is very clear about this, but we are not finished yet. We need to explore another method, which is the Shape Builder tool. Guys, and how the Shape Builder tool works? First of all, we need to get back to where we were, that case, okay? So here, again, in this example, let's use now the Shape Builder tool. Shape Builder tool is very awesome if you want to have a more a smart selection. But that case, the way that I use it is very easy. I have here the Shape Builder tool, and then I want to select the shape that I want to merge. So I will click and drag to select the areas that I want to blend, and then I will hit Enter. And Affinity will make them just 
one single object. This is happening because I'm selecting the areas that I want to merge and hit enter. So if I just select, for example, this area, this area and press delete, affinity will subtract. Let me back in this example. Let's say that I want to make this flat, this area. How you can manage with that? Create now a rectangle here below. Let's make this different color so you can see what's happening. And select the shape here on top. Okay, this one. So everything needs to be selected if you want to use the shape builder tool. All right, shape builder tool. Now turn it on and select the area that you want to subtract. I personally want to subtract this area all below. This guy's here. Select it and press delete. And now you have this result. If you is missing, you know, some kind of object. So you can select by clicking and delete, and then we're gonna clean up your project. So now we have here our uh, tree, as you can see. Now I'm, I'm going to change now this color to be the same, something like that. And then you can apply, if you want, a little bit of gradient, just like this, here as well, and here as well. And look at the result of our small tree, really nice. And if you want to go even more further with this tutorial, I really want to thank you, really want to thank you for our, your efforts to stay here with me. In that case, I want to insert a circle here on top of this object. Okay, make this lighter, something like that. I'm going to insert another one because I want to subtract this shape. Let's say here, more or less like that. Select this both shape. <clears throat> shape builder tool and select this area that I want to delete and press delete and then I'm gonna extract these highlights from this tree which is really cool same for this one insert a shape duplicate the shape and then by using the you know shape builder tool you can subtract as you can see this area it is merging is getting outside of this so you can insert a new object here and then subtract by using the shape builder tool which is going to be you know very nice for you you can apply transparency to here as well, transparency to and transparency to really nice. And here, let's say that you up, you apply a gradient a little bit, just to create a shadow and make it a better contrast. Okay. After that, we want to create a new rectangle right here. And remember about the compound. The compound is very good for this uh, reason because we can uh, select this both shape, go here, create compound, and then you can duplicate this and build the shape that you want. Like this, we can make a very nice tree just like that. And let's ungroup everything because I like to make this everything very organized. And then, as you can see, you can duplicate this and change the size. You can modify here the shape or you know, duplicate. In that case, I'm gonna make this more tall here, this one like that. You can see that this is becoming a very different result because we are using the compound path here which is create this very dynamic result because if you try to do you know these changes over a converted shape like that let's say you you do this you convert this to curves so to change this you need to select manually right manually with the node tool you need to select manually the nodes in order to change them it really depends the method that you, you want to use but please let me know here on the description below which method you like most right about the three ones we have the merge one the compound and also the shape builder tool of course if you want to learn much more than this tutorial i really suggest you to get my new courses that it is available here to you on the description below because it is on there that explain every single step about how you can use affinity designer just like me well that's it for now i really hope that you really enjoyed and found this tutorial useful please comment in here below what you like most and i hope to see you in the next tutorial all right see you and take care